Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about getting breastfeeding off to a good start. Um, and it will be a whistle stop tour about beginning breastfeeding. Okay, so once baby arrives, really you want to place baby in skin to skin contact for as long as possible. Um, most mothers find that baby will be placed directly on your chest after delivery um, and rubbed down with a starchy NHS towel um, and left there to just to do the business. Um, and what a baby will actually do in that, especially in that first hour, is they will actually crawl to the breast, um, which is an amazing thing to watch. One thing I would say is um, maybe get baby weighed after they've done their first breastfeed rather than um, take them off because they have a whole specific set of um, steps that they have to follow. We don't know why they have to follow them, but there are steps that they have to follow um, after delivery when they're having that first breast crawl. And if we take them off halfway through, they have to start at the beginning again. So it's not fair on them, really. <laughs> it isn't. No. Uh, it's, and, th and that means that sort of this is including some head bobbing, some crawling um, and some looking at you wide eyed and, and beautiful. And during this time, you'll be counting fingers, counting toes. Probably um, you might be um, delivering the placenta. And if you were to need any any um, stitches or anything, the midwife would be doing them while you were having skin to skin contact. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's lovely. You don't have to have a gooey baby. They can wipe the baby down. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so is, keeping... is this something you should be putting down in your in your birth plan to say to your midwife, this is exactly what I want to happen, so that baby is allowed to get as much skin to skin at the, at the beginning. You can do yes. Uh, one of the things that it, it really does help is with delivery of the placenta because um, you get that oxytocin rush and if baby actually starts um, suckling at the breast it will help cause contractions of the uterus to expel everything. Right. But most hospitals tend to do this as standard now. Yeah. Um, if you were to need a C-section, they can do. You can have skin to skin in theatre if you feel well enough. Yeah. Or if um, if you don't feel well enough, your partner can have skin to skin contact. Um, and then when you're in recovery, you can have skin to skin contact with whilst you were with help from the, the nurses that are with you. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's mm. it's a lovely thing to have. Yeah. Um, and uh, you don't have to be completely naked. They'll pop a, a sheet over your towel and things like that. So to keep baby warm. Yeah. Okay, so then we want to breastfeed often. So, um, so long as your baby has not had any um, pain relief during, during delivery, and I will talk about that a little bit, a bit later on, um, you probably find that baby will have their first initial feed and then um, go to sleep for a few hours. Then after that, you might find that your baby wants to feed all of the time, okay? Which is a bit overwhelming. Um, they want to stimulate um, the milk and get colostrum. And you might also find that your baby will actually be perfectly brilliant, well-behaved, you know, that's feed three hour lay, wake up and feed and go back to sleep again during the daytime. Yeah. But when it comes to nighttime, you'll probably find that your baby wakes up and wants to feed all night. Yeah. Um, and this is quite normal. If you think about now when your baby's in utero, when they become active, most people will actually say it's when they start getting ready for bed and mm -hmm. uh, or, or settling down in the evening, the baby comes alive and start moving. Yeah. That pattern will continue on for the, at least the first two or three weeks um, as, as, as babies develop. And one of the reasons about this is, um, putting my sleep hat on, is that actually babies have no circadian rhythms at all for the first few weeks. So, baby isn't broken it just wants to feed very frequently and if you let your baby have as much contact with the breast in those first two to three days then they're going to bring your milk in quicker so the colostrum is um is what the baby is the first milk that your baby has and i think that's actually on the next slide 
Yeah. <laughs> so the colostrum is your first milk, and this can be a variety of colours. Um, normally yellow is called liquid gold. It's a lot stickier and a lot less in volumes and it's jam packed full of antibodies. So even if you decide not to breastfeed, offering the first breastfeed as, a, as an, um, an immunity boost is absolutely fantastic thing to do. Um, so baby will be suckling and, and getting small, small volumes of colostrum. And then once they fully triggered the breast, and primed it, the milk will start coming in. Okay. Um, when, when, does, when does the milk come in? How, how quickly does that happen? Okay, so it does depend a little bit on um, what's happened in labour, but also um, how frequently the baby's fed. Um, mm. So anywhere between sort of two and, and five days it can come in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Normally it's around day three. And what you'll suddenly notice is your baby starting to drink a lot more mm -hmm. and you'll be like wide awake. I think I have a video coming up next, which it sort of shows that 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 good drinking. But it, it yeah. will come in. if it's not next, it's coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, once your milk comes in very often, if baby will have a really, really good feed. Yeah. And then be zonked for a good couple of hours and your boobs will start to fill up. Yeah. Um, so we will talk a little bit about hand expression in a moment. OK. Yeah. And in those those first couple of days when you are feeding and I know that I used to have worries about baby putting weight on, especially in those early days. Does your baby gain, gain weight or lose weight in the first bit? And is that normal? OK, so it's quite normal for babies to lose weight initially. Okay. Um, the various trusts around the region um, all have slightly different policies, some way on day three, some way on day five. Mm -hmm. And it's quite normal for um, babies to, to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So you, um, that is because the colostrum has actually got laxative and diuretic in to make babies pee and poo. Ah, so, in the, so some of the weight loss is actually pouring out that excess stuff that's the black meconium mm -hmm. that's in in their gut because it's sitting there and it needs to come out um so some of the weight loss can be in relation to that and it would be perfectly normal to lose up to eight percent without uh, any issue whatsoever yeah. if a baby was to lose a little bit more weight than that it's just an indication we need to take a close look at what's going on mm -hmm. make sure latch is right make sure baby's actually able to transfer milk effectively yeah. um and and your midwife will keep a little bit of an eye on you yeah. if a baby is very very sleepy and yeah. not feeding at all you're probably going to have a little bigger weight loss than you were if your baby was active and, and, and feeding frequently. Yeah. But that's why you get closely monitored in the first few days. Uh, and one more question. If you were uh, planning not to breastfeed, but you wanted to give that first bit of colostrum, should mm -hmm. you feed for, for the first day or for up to the five days? What, what would you suggest doing? It's entirely up to you. It really is. Yeah. Um, Lots, lots. Some parents will do just that first initial feed with skin to skin and then go to bottles. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's your choice. Okay. It really is your choice. As long as you're giving breast milk, babies are still getting the benefits that they will get from the from the milk. OK, yeah. OK, great. Thanks. So one of the biggest things that I come across is, is pain when breastfeeding and um, many women will come and say, oh, well, I was told it looks OK, but it still hurts. OK, mm -hmm. so I'll tell you what it should look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in this picture, the baby is latched on beautifully. Um, can you see that in there that the where's my marks? Yeah, here. The chin is really, really pushing into the breast and the nose is quite free. This is what's called an asymmetric latch. OK, so the baby's coming on that way. I, I got a booby here. <laughs> what a great job. Yeah, baby. Boobies everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got. Yeah, I have got three and a doll. And <laughs> so the baby's planting its chin just here and coming up with its mouth here. So it's got an asymmetric latch. Mm -hmm. You've got a nice gap between the nose and the breast. We've got the head tilted back. We've got more areola above the top lip than below. Mm -hmm. Baby's alert and active. Their cheeks are really nice and 
full, full that yeah. suggests that this baby's actually got enough breast in the mouth. Yeah. If there isn't enough breast in the mouth, we get... Okay, yeah. We get those sucking in of the cheeks. Uh -huh. okay. And the biggest thing... Oh, we also like, like nice drinking there. But the biggest thing is no pain. Okay. So... Um, very often you find mums, as I said before, come, oh, well, I was told it looked all right, but I'm, it still hurts. Mm. Sometimes it can be just a slight tweak and positioning can suddenly be really, really comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes it might be something else going on in there, like a tongue tie, which is causing baby to clamp down on the breast. Okay. It depends. So I would not tolerate pain apart from the occasional um pain on initial latch yeah when you're learning how to how to latch baby on yeah. um and it certainly shouldn't be painful at all more than a few weeks in okay okay yeah that um, makes sense. yeah it's position wise and how you latch your baby on there's very there's several different techniques mm -hmm. um and so you've got um cross cradle you've got normal cradle hold flipple technique rugby ball which is good for twins or if you've had a c-section yeah laid back feeding yeah. koala hold it doesn't it's loads matter. oh yeah it does <laughs> I, I think you find that lots of different practitioners lots of different people will give you their favorite tip, yeah yeah my favorite ones are like a cradle hold with a touch of flipple in but okay <laughs> great <laughs> it, it's one of those things um yeah um but really it doesn't matter yeah. how you put your baby on so long as it's comfortable and the baby's drinking yeah okay. and if you if you get pain afterwards so if you feed fine but afterwards because maybe you've been feeding quite often or if you're getting do you get cracked cracked nipples and things like that is that still a sign that you're not uh, in, a, in a good position for feeding as well yes because a ba baby can feed 12 times a day if the position yeah. is right it doesn't hurt at all okay. and you won't get damaged nipples okay okay oh actually i will add here your nipples do not toughen up okay I, oh, that's I a good this thing no to many. know this is a myth yeah. um, you have little dots or little mm -hmm. almost like little spots around your areola yeah. and these are called montgomery glands and they are there to produce oils and pheromones mm -hmm. and they keep the nipples soft yeah. Now, um, we need our nipples to be sensitive so that messages can get up to the brain to release the, the hormones oxytocin and prolactin yeah. and then trigger your letdown reflex. Yeah. If our nipples toughened up, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. We mm -hmm. get better at latching baby on. Yeah, okay. so that makes a lot of sense. Do not toughen up. Yeah, it's <laughs> good to know. I wish I'd known this before, my goodness. Cool. Oh, and... Um, little tips on healing nipples um some mums find a nice nipple balm can be quite useful or maybe yeah. some lanolin cream if it's anything more than a tiny little bit of damage um some mums find um hydrogel pads very helpful or the silver yeah. cups they can also be quite helpful but the best thing to stop the nipple damage is get the correct. position right yeah, yeah correct position yeah it makes sense okay so let's see what's on the next slide yeah so this is a video so this one's actually yeah. going to show um babies drinking and this is what once the milk comes in around day three to five we're looking for the the jaw movement okay mm -hmm. and if you see this baby is latched on really nicely mm -hmm. i don't know if we'll get the sound for this let's have a look see it's a seven day old baby and she's deeply attached um, and they're going to focus on the good swallowing. Okay, so the bot bottom that oh, you can yeah. see the milk going down. Mm -hmm. Swallow, swallow, yeah, swallow. Yeah, that's good. And the baby will have a pause and then she'll start again. Oh, and yeah. There. This is nice active drinking. Yeah. This little video clip is available on the La Leche League of Great Britain um, YouTube account. Yeah. It's a really nice little video. And you'll see there the baby's chin's in the breast. Her nose was quite free. Coming mm -hmm. in a little bit now, her head's tilted back. She's got big fat cheeks there. 
Uh, <laughs> they're not pinched in. There's no clicking and she's definitely drinking. And hopefully that mum's not in any pain. Yeah. And then they start going to sleep. Song counts. But that's allowed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, oh, she's cute, isn't she? She is so Sorry, cute. Sorry, I could just sit I'm, and watch that all day. I know, and I'm getting broody. This is not a good thing. <laughs> I can't have any more now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop that. That's, that's the case, and we'll move on to the next slide. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. And it doesn't want to stop. Two ticks. Okay, so there. <laughs> Thought she was never going to go away. <laughs> okay, so once your milk comes in, baby's feeding pattern should settle down. Okay, so yeah. before we talked about babies wanting to feed an awful lot to bring the milk in. Yeah. We offer both breasts each feed. So you start on one, let baby come off, and then offer the other. Um, you may need to hand express at this stage because your boobs might be a bit full if the babies are, are settling in to sleep and you've, mm -hmm. they've gone from feeding all the time to being quite calm. Very quickly, with my trusted boob again, <laughs> you make a C shape with your hand and feel back until you notice a change in texture. So it's where it's lumpy and bumpy. Mm -hmm. And you compress and release, compress and release. And you then move your hand round to work on all the, all the ducts of the breast, okay? There are lots of videos on you on YouTube all about yeah. hand expression. Okay. Um, your midwife should show you whilst before you leave the hospital. Okay. Um, lay back feeding. So once baby is on, I'm going to grab the grab the dolly and hope things don't fall down. Okay. So once baby is on, whichever way you're doing, actually sitting back, getting baby's bottom down below their head so that the baby is above the breast rather than below can really, really help uh -huh. with, with milk coming out quite fast. Yeah. Because having a sitting upright with your boob, baby below your boob, mm. it's a little bit like waterboarding. Yeah, that's a good point. Don't have the baby's head free so it can actually drink. Yeah. Um, watch out for nappy output because this will reassure you that the baby's getting a lot of milk. So the first two or three days, you're going to get meconium nappies. They're going to be black, tarry, horrible, sticky things. Yeah. By around day three to five, they're going to change into the um, loose yellow chicken korma style. Yeah. Um, yellow nappies. OK, yellow stroke orange. And by around day five, six, you're looking for around three decent sized poos and six heavy wet nappies and that means baby's getting lots of milk your midwife will ask you when she visits how many wheeze and poos the baby's done and she will ask you what texture they are and what color okay yeah. so somebody not mummy can count them and change them <laughs> yeah <Okay? Obviously>. yeah <laughs> um and also remembering if in doubt with baby's behavior just offer the breast so mm -hmm. you may have just fed them mm -hmm. And they've had that nappy changed and they might be fussy and you think they can't possibly want any more boob. Yeah. There's no harm in offering. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if in doubt. Was, put yeah, the just try. Yeah, because that was the other thing that I always remember being, can you offer the boob too much or can you can you overfeed? Yeah. It's very hard to do that with a breastfed baby because they will tell you when they're not hungry. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good. Um, I would also avoid teats and dummies until you feel confident with breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people will say, oh, you've got to wait till six weeks. But if you're confident with positioning, if you're confident with what you're doing, it's your baby and it's your choice. OK. Um, and we need to talk a little bit. I'm rushing because of the time. We need to talk a little bit about um, how delivery can actually impact on, on baby's okay. behaviour. Mm -hmm. Um, because it does impact on how a baby will behave in the early days. Yeah. Uh, the drugs in labour, everything apart from gas and air, can make baby sleepy. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't have any pain relief if you need it, but yeah. you need to be aware that babies are impacted on this one. Mm -hmm. um, they might also be bruised and, or tender or stiff from the delivery. Yeah. Um, and no doubt you've had other practitioners talk about that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, if your baby is not feeding very well and they are drugged or they are sore, um, the hospital staff will probably put a feeding plan in place and get you hand expressing or using a breast pump to stimulate yeah. your breasts and get some milk. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so when baby is feeling better or a baby is awake, then that means that you can actually feed your baby and the milk's, milk's there. Yeah. So um, learning how to hand express again is key. It's a very yeah. useful tool. The thing to remember is the three keeps, okay? If your baby, if, if things don't go quite right. So you keep the baby fed, you keep the milk flowing, and you keep the mum and baby together, okay? Yeah. Yeah. If those things are, are kept in place, then once things settle down, you're back home in the community, then, then we can fix things. Yeah, that makes we sense. Need the, we need the boobs to be stimulated in the first place yeah to be able to fix things later down the line if yeah. need be. Okay? yeah that makes so sense. If, it, if it does go absolutely crazy and and you're discharged and you're bottle feeding but you really wanted to breastfeed if you've kept up the exp the expressing and the stimulating of the boobs you can change right great okay. well, that's that's really good to know really good to know um and if somebody is hand expressing are they more or should I say less likely to get mastitis as well is that or is that a myth um gentle hand expressing is a very very useful tool and if baby mm. isn't feeding very effectively and you feel feel like there's still some milk in the breast um if there are some early issues then um yeah hand expressing can really help with that yeah um yeah it can do yeah okay and is, is mastitis another sign that perhaps you're not feeding that we haven't got you quite the right feeding position or is that can that happen for other reasons as well um more in the early stages you tend to find that mastitis comes when milk's not being effectively drained from the breast so that might also be if you have nipple um nipple trauma yeah. um then they're suggesting that the, it suggests the nipple's being pinched so the milk's not able to get out yeah yeah so it's all it is all interlinked a little bit further down the line it can be for other reasons missed feeds or wearing a sling the wrong way or lots of other reasons yeah okay that makes yeah. sense okay but and initially so if... in the first weeks it's all about positioning and yeah. making sure the baby is draining the breast effectively yeah and if somebody decides uh, that they're well, they want to keep breastfeeding or they're struggling so much with breastfeeding that they go onto the bottle mm -hmm. what would you suggest for them at that point um, it's there is no right or wrong answer um, if you want to breastfeed and want to continue breastfeeding it is far better to actually try and seek out some a skilled practitioner to help you and resolve things and, and find a, a balance of what you want to do if you want to move on to bottle feeding that is entirely your choice it's your baby and nobody is going to be telling you what to do mm -hmm. um, but I would say that don't stop on a bad day yeah and try if you if you really want to breastfeed it's about trying to find the um somebody who's skilled enough to support you when things aren't quite going to plan yeah so if somebody's in the northeast they should definitely come and see you if if and everybody tells me that as well everyone i know who's had babies and struggled they're like amanda is brilliant and i wish i'd known about you when i was breastfeeding because I, th I i had some serious issues that okay. it, just knowing this would have really helped me with so thank you it's been really useful you're um, very very welcome i'll just put up the final yeah, slide i was gonna say well how do people they, get hold of you just said we're milk and mum so um it's myself and Gillian lund she's a midwife she's a tongue tie practitioner and she's a lactation consultant like myself yeah. um i'm also a holistic sleep coach and a mindful breastfeeding practitioner we've got a lovely website there milk and mums um right. and you can contact us via the website um but yeah right. it's that's great that I mean and if somebody needs practical support they're not in the in the northeast where would you suggest they they look for for some help okay so um well first of all your first first line of support is your um midwife and your health visitor okay yeah. they should be able to support you um if you want further further support you would look on the lactation consultants of great britain website and yeah. you can find your nearest lactation consultant yeah um and lact a lactation consultant that is the the ibclc is the highest qualification in the world that you can get in boobs okay, okay. so that's what you need to be looking for yeah. yeah yeah 
um, and it's sort of sort of you do loads and loads of, of training for this and sit an exam. So it's not just doing a two day course. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, if you have an issue with a tongue tie, you can look on the um, um, tongue tie practitioners website. So it's the Association of Tongue Tie Practitioners. If you yeah. put that into Google, it will show up the um, the website and it will then you can put your postcode in and it will find your nearest one to you right and there's well, nhs and private on that website okay great what i'll try and do actually is pull some of these names in the resource list as well so we can put that onto the onto the know your floors site so we can link onto them but that's great but thank you very much amanda it's been so 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 in, informative and as I say, I wish I'd I wish I'd had this. And it, and it was, was very really much, hard. yeah, it was very much a whistle stop tour that one. Yeah, there's there's more to learn, isn't there? Really, oh, but I thank could you talk so about much. it all day. <laughs> I bet you could. But thank you very much. Um, <laughs>